Welcome to Tech Throwback. Today, we are here with a cool old product that I love, a company that I love, and one that you don't see many of their products around, and, well, really an MP3 player that failed in the US market. This is the iRiver T9. We're gonna jump into the T9 in just a moment, but first, let's talk about the company iRiver. iRiver is a Korean company that made a bunch of honestly very innovative and cool, sleek electronics devices. They kind of wanted to be Apple, you can tell it's white, silver, looks really industrial, and most of their products did look really nice, just like this, and they were pretty high-end as well. They were priced uh, to match their very industrial looks, and they worked pretty well for the most part too. But they just didn't catch on here in the US, especially when its competitor was, well, the iPod. And the iPod, of course, was a juggernaut that could take on really anything there was. As we know now, Apple just stormed through and took over basically every category until there were no categories like portable MP3 player left. And that is why you don't see a lot of iRiver devices in the USA. Instead, it seems like a lot of them sold in Russia, Ukraine, countries like that. I'm sure plenty of them sold in Korea. Uh, at one point, they were responsible for, I think, 50% of Korea's consumer electronics exports. That is incredible. So they were definitely out there making a difference in their country and the sales just kind of fell flat overseas. But I did get my hands on this T9. It's the only one I've ever seen and I bought this out of Ukraine at the beginning of the conflict. So I ended up buying this and I didn't get it for uh, something like six months later because the owner had to leave their house and they got back there and shipped this out immediately. I sent them the money. I didn't really care if I even got the device. Obviously, I wanted to make this video for you guys, but I figured supporting somebody in the Ukraine directly would be one of the coolest ways to take care of them over there. But he actually did end up shipping me a, a whole bunch of iRiver devices that I wanted and that we didn't really see over here in the US. So I'm excited to have this one. And of course, it came loaded with Ukrainian music. So let's jump in and talk about the iRiver T9. It's a form factor you've probably seen before. Everybody kind of ended up emulating this. It looks like a flash drive with an MP3 player stuck on the end of it. And that is honestly what it is, but they did add a lot of fun, innovative features in here. And when I say fun and innovative, I don't mean good. I mean, they were gimmicky. And uh, it, it does add to its cool factor, I guess, but it probably takes away from the experience. I mean, here's a fun one for you. If it's playing music and you plug it in to the USB port to start charging, it disables all the switches. Not really fun or innovative, it's more of a downside, but it's got a lot of cool things like that going for it. The T9 is very small. It's about the size of a pack of Double Mint Gum, Wintergreen, any of the old normal style gum packs, that's exactly the size it is. Like I said, 30 grams, extremely light, 30 paper clips. It has an OLED display, 128 by 64 is the resolution, and it's mono, just a single color. We have a four-way D-pad right here. The USB port is supposed to retract, but unfortunately mine is broken and the sliding switch is missing. So I've tried to put something in there and slide it back. No matter what I do, the USB port will not slide back into the housing. It's pretty firm, so it's definitely locked in place. This is only USB 2 and obviously you can see it's USB-A as well. Just past the slide switch, we have the volume rocker. We've got up and down right there. And it's kind of weird because this thing can change its screen direction and that does throw you off for the volume control. So if the screen is going one way, it seems like up would be this way and down would be that way, but up is always on the top of the MP3 player. And it's also hard to find in your pocket sometimes. It's a bit of a weird design language, but it probably works out once you get used to using this exclusively. On top of the T9 here, we got the power button, which is marked in orange, kind of different since everything else on here is silver, black, or white. And then we've got the mic opening beside that, a little reset button, which you'll probably want to keep a paper clip handy for. I have one right here. If you push buttons too fast, sometimes it just locks up. Another fun and innovative feature from iRiver. It's got a headphone jack beside that, 3.5 millimeter, and the little hook for the lanyard strap is right underneath that headphone jack. On the back, it's just a slab of anodized aluminum, like Apple, and we've got the serial number laser engraved there and four gigabytes. The T9 only came in two gigabytes and four gigabyte varieties, which was way behind the times when this came out. In fact, it's actually an iRiver T8, 
where they miniaturized a few things and made it look a lot sleeker. The T8 looked a little childish. This looks much more industrial and like something an adult would carry around. Not to mention it's so small. Again, pack a gum. You can put this thing anywhere. Wouldn't even notice it in your pocket. I was able to find some of the original advertising material somebody archived for the T9. So thank you guys for saving all this stuff out there. It's kind of the point of this channel too is archiving all the old tech. So if you want to see something that you'll probably never find uh, other than in a landfill or in a museum or something, it'll be here. But the marketing said it came in four colors. There was party pink for feminine and Engadget actually wrote their whole article about the T9 about the pink color. Uh, they basically called it a Barbie toy and well, it was four gigabytes. So they had it wrote off from the beginning and they just kept trashing it from there. It's honestly a pretty competent MP3 player, but it also came in velvet brown for a gentle metrosexual. They said it, not me. Silky silver for future-oriented metallic. Okay, well, at least we've got silky silver here. And classy black for a chic look. It's the perfect choice for your fashion accessory. Now the T9 got a G sensor, and that is what sets it apart from all the other MP3 player flash drives of this time period. And iRiver based all of their fun and innovative features on that G sensor. So I gotta read this to you guys. Shake T9 to play next song, fun shaking. See, fun and innovative. The T9 brings you a whole new way to enjoy music. With the built-in G sensor, you can shake your T9 to play the next song as first introduced in the B30. Just go with the rhythm and shake it to play the next song in the queue. It's easy, it's fun, and convenient. It's, it's not, it's not any of those things actually. It's more like shake to undo on the iPhone. You should be able to shake and undo that feature. Basically, if it's turned on, every time this thing shakes, and when I say shakes, I mean like, that's enough, it will switch tracks. Why would you want that? If you're running, it's gonna switch tracks every footstep. If you're doing anything around the house, it's, it's, it's just gonna switch tracks all the time. I tried it quite a bit, and the slightest little bump will make it switch tracks. I really doubt anyone ever used that feature other than to play with it for about three seconds like I did, and then they turned it right back off. And the other thing the G-Sensor gives you, which I'll show you here in a second, is if you turn the player over while it's playing, you go 180 degrees over, it changes the repeat mode to an inside of the song loop. So if there's like a chorus that you wanna hear over and over and over, you can flip it over and it changes how the D-pad works, and then you can set an in point for your loop and an out point for your loop and it will sit there and play that over and over, but not seamlessly with a one second gap between them. So old G-Sensor, not great. The G-Sensor did do one other thing on this. It enabled fitness mode, which kept track of your steps. It's got a pedometer in it and also calories burnt. Now it doesn't have any weight info for the user and it, it, it's probably not accurate at all. So I would say that the entire fitness section of this thing is kind of a joke. And it's also how you lock it up. If you go into fitness and you push too many buttons, you have to reset the player. So don't take it running in fitness mode because it might lock up on you and then you'd have no music for your run. It might sound like I'm being a little bit harsh to the T9 and iRiver, a company that I really do like. So let's jump into some of the upsides. 24 hour playtime, a whole day. And as you guys know, you typically use your MP3 player for maybe like an hour or two. That would last a long time on a full charge. 24 hours, absolutely epic. If you plug it into your car, say you're listening to music, pull your headphones out, plug it into the USB port in your car, boom, it's just a flash drive and you've got all your music with you to listen to in your car. And formats, it can play MP3, WMA, WAV, APE, I don't even know what APE is, and I've been around MP3s for a long time, and FLAC. No AUG Vorbis, but it's probably lossless on the FLAC side, which is pretty cool. Obviously it can play all of those file types, but also it is just a flash drive if you wanna use it to move some files around. So plug it into your car, plug it into your computer, move your, your Word documents, your Excel files between work and home. It can do a lot of things. So it was kind of a, you know, a nice little Swiss Army knife you could keep in your pocket that's unnoticeable and it does play music back. So kind of cool. Four gigabytes though, you do have to remember, you probably wouldn't be moving video files around. Just small 640, 480 video files at the time, sure, but nothing in today's world. We mentioned the mic earlier, of course, it does have a built-in voice recorder it has a built-in FM radio and it can record the FM radio. Not only that, but it can schedule record the FM radio and it's got an equalizer with a bunch of presets and SRS WOW HD. Uh, SRS WOW HD is not good. I remember loving that button in Windows Media Player. It was always really cool to be like, wow, look at this, we can turn on the SRS effects. Um, that was a gimmick because listening to it today, you realize just how bad it is. The treble was boosted like 
I don't have a scientific number, but I'd guess 6 dB. With the treble being so loud, you have to turn the volume down, so the bass wasn't any better either. Uh, SRS Wow, it was definitely a marketing tool for its time. All right, let's power the iRiver up and check this thing out. So we've got firmware 1.17. Every time it turns on, since it is a flash drive and it's not really keeping track of its music database, it rebuilds the database. I guess they just assume that you might have added something and it needs to get an update. Now the display does a little bit of a weird thing. It was definitely a design choice. It's not a broken display, but you can see the OLED display. It says music right now. And the U and the I are darker than the M and the S, and then the C is really dark. And it's not a bad display. That is how they designed this thing. So hopefully you guys can get a good look at the different contrast between each letter. It looks kind of cool, but it does make it harder to read in sunlight. And speaking of reading it in sunlight, which they advertise, you can read it in direct sunlight. You can't even see the display and I have it on high brightness. So it's not that bright. Uh, you're definitely not going to be using this outside without putting your hand over it and looking really closely. Let's run through the menu here real quick. It does have awesome animations that look pretty futuristic between each level of the menu. And I do appreciate that a lot. So music, fitness, radio, record, browser, which is a file browser. It's not an internet browser. There is no Wi-Fi or anything like that. And setting, not settings, setting. Okay, so over here in music, we have the normal menu you'd see on about every MP3 player. We've got now playing a directory list, which is interesting, obviously. Uh, since it wants to act like a flash drive, they put that at the top, which is basically just the file browser. If you go in there, it does load the file browser immediately. I plugged the T9 into my desktop and threw a couple folders of old MP3s on here, just so I'd have something to listen to that wasn't Ukrainian. So <laughs> let's go back. We've got all music, album, artists, genres, my rating. You can rate each song individually and then pull them back in by rating. Kind of like iTunes, but I don't think it stores it in the ID3 tag on this. It might store it in its internal database. And then my playlist. That's all the music, pretty simple. Fitness, we'll load that up to start. Hit over. We started it. And now, let's see if we can make it do it. Five steps. Six steps. Ten steps. And we'll hit pause. Or, oh, look at that. We've got distance, 0 0.007 kilometers. Never saw that before. And there's kilocalories. Oh, and a timer. Finish sports, yes. And it does not keep track of those. Your workout's gone once you hit finish sports. <laughs> It could save them in a text file. Basically all the configuration for this thing is simply text files. And there are screensavers and stuff like that we're going to get into in a minute. Even the actual configuration of the device, it's literally just a bunch of flat text files. You can adjust them on your computer to do whatever you want. And they didn't let you save your fitness. It should just write out each workout as a text file, but oh well, they didn't think of that. Radio, let's go into the radio real quick. Channel one, 87.5. And it is normal FM bands, which is kind of interesting. So we can go up and down to tune through stations manually. There's also presets. And if we hold over, there we go. We can hit record, saved FM recordings. We can save a preset. It can do auto presets, pretty cool. Scan, and there's our timer recording and the tuner region. And Korea, USA, oh, because Korea and USA are the same bands, awesome. And Japan and Europe. All right, that was the entire FM radio. Here's record, it has a file in there and it says it can record for 11 hours and 30 minutes. That is pretty solid, honestly. Is there anything else in here? Let's hold over, I haven't actually looked. Voice detector, huh. I wonder if it can automatically pause when no one's talking. So it has on and off under voice detector. Saved recordings, there's one in here and it's a guy speaking Ukrainian, probably the old owner. And it sounds like he's saying test, test and, and that's the end of it. Voice recorders on these were interesting. I never used one for any actual usage. Maybe somebody did. Here's uh, the file browser. We got a couple folders here, music playlist recording and system. Uh, DID.bin is probably a firmware upgrade. And if we look in system, we can see those flat text files I was just telling you about. There's screensaver one and screensaver two. You can't even open them. You can't look at your text files. You just change the screensavers on your computer and put them back. There's device info, TXT and T9 sys. Even T9Sys, that is the factory configuration of this, is just a flat text file. All right, down to settings. This is where it gets good. Screensaver, screensaver type. You can pick time saver, which seems like it would be a clock, but it's actually the current playtime in the MP3 you're listening to. 
and then message saver. Under message saver, we've got two screen savers and you'd think those would be cool like graphical screen savers. They're not, they take forever to come on. Probably, I think it's five minutes before they show up on screen and it's four dots and then the text file and four dots. That's all you get on screen. And one of them says to one's memory and the other one says enjoy your life. That is the entire screensaver setup. I'm not kidding you. No fun graphics or anything like that, but at least you can change them to say whatever you want. I think it takes five minutes for it to start, but I'm gonna try to show you guys the screensaver right now. Switching on off, I have that set to on. That enables the G sensor flip so you can do the looping mode. Date and time, this is honestly a really nice interface to set the date and time. I was able to set the whole thing in about 15 seconds, which is really impressive. A lot of things have convoluted menus to set date and time. The T9 nails it. Good job, iRiver. How'd you do so well? Under display, we've got backlight and brightness. You can set how long the backlight's on and the display brightness, it's turned all the way up. Timer, we've got auto power off and a sleep timer. Very nice, gotta love that. And under advanced, we've got rebuild the database, which it does every time it turns on. Format device if you want to wipe it. System information, which shows us that it's running version 1.17 on the firmware. And free memory, 3,649 megabytes there. Reset all settings, does what it says. It resets all settings. And the language, that's honestly really impressive. Every language takes up quite a bit of space in the firmware file because you're like rebuilding the whole menu structure again in another language. So a lot of manufacturers just leave two, English and whatever country the device was built in. And if you need another language, they'll make you download firmware or something to go support those languages, especially back in these days where space was at a premium. So they gave you everything. That is every menu on the device. Let's take a look at playing back some music. So we'll go to now playing. We got some big timers right there. It starts playing immediately and it shows that it's playing straight through. If we hold down the play button, It'll load up our menu here. We've got A, B, repeat. We've got the play mode. Let's take a look at that. Normal, repeat one, repeat, shuffle, shuffle and repeat. Everything you'd expect. They fit everything into this device. For being tiny, it's got a good menu structure that does make sense. It's too bad the gimmicks ended up taking away from it in the reviews. It's still a really solid device. Study mode, that's what lets you loop the in and out point so you can study one section of a song. It seems like it should be you know, something you're studying for school or work or whatever and it has some kind of special mode that optimizes listening for that. But no, it's just the thing that repeats a section of the song. Select EQ. We've got a couple EQs in here. Normal, rock, pop, classic, jazz, custom. Let's open up custom. Look at that. We got a five band equalizer in custom. 50 hertz, 200 hertz, one kilohertz, three kilohertz, and 14 kilohertz. You can set each one of them and it shows the game. Cool. SRS wow, you can turn that on and off. Ooh, SRS, true bass, focus, wow, and definition, wow. Fade in, and a couple other settings in there. Let's change the EQ back to normal. You've got your song rating there in the menu as well. And lyric display, which is pretty interesting. If there are lyrics in the ID3 file, I guess, it can display them. I've never seen that, and I don't know many songs that would have the lyrics in the file either. Shaking on and off, that's the feature where you shake to skip tracks. I already have that off, don't worry. And that's basically it for playback. So that's really the entire iRiver T9. I've been listening to it now for like four hours because I charged it, took it out, did some chores outside, used it with my old Apple headphones. No, it does not support uh, the play pause or volume up down buttons. So if you're using tip ring ring sleeve headphones like this, uh, it will play through them, but the microphone obviously doesn't do anything and neither do the controls. And you'll probably, like I said, wanna have a paper clip with you to reset it if it locks up. Now, if you just play music with it, it doesn't lock up. It works really well. And 24 hours of playback time, again, impressive. If you didn't wanna use your phone, this would still be viable today. As long as you're down to only have four gigabytes of music. If you push the hold button at any time, it locks the controls, puts a little padlock on the screen there. It does not lock the volume control. And the volume control is really, really nice. It's got the up and down, but the OLED display has a speaker. It shows the number the volume set on, 25 right now. And it has what looks like theater seats and every single notch of volume adds another seat filled to the theater basically. So it, it looks like you know a speaker with a sound wave in front of it. But I really do appreciate the graphical display of the volume control. You could look down pretty quickly and know exactly what's going on with it. It also plays really loud. The last thing I have to do is show you guys the G sensor in study mode. So you're supposed to hold the MP3 player like this, um, the USB port facing your hand or 
you know, whatever direction that would be for you. And it shows the display normal with the arrow pointing towards the battery. That means it's just playing through. And then if you flip it over, the display turns over just like that. And it says study. Now that it's playing, the back button sets the endpoint. So I've got A and repeat. And then you hit it again, and now I've got AB, and it shows two little markers, and it's replaying that little section of the song. And then if we flip it over, it actually stays in it. And then if I hit play, it deletes it. There you go. That is the G sensor. And that is the iRiver T9, a really cool gum sized MP3 player with 24 hours of playtime that I had to buy from Ukraine because they didn't sell well here in the US. The T9 is honestly a really solid little MP3 player that didn't deserve all the bad reviews it got or the poor sales that it got in the US. I really don't think they brought many of them here in the first place. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching Tech Throwback. Don't forget to subscribe and I can't wait to see you on the next one. <music>